I have been trying to film this video for the past hour. This is just gonna be the season of my life where I film all my YouTube videos in the car. It's the only place I can get quiet and I have an office. With summer break and kids being home, everyone knocks on my door, everyone that has a question comes to me, no one goes to the other parent that's in the house working from home as well and we all know why because the kids go to the mom i just left and i'm like i'm gonna go film in my car because i know i'm not gonna get any interruptions so <laughs> we're starting all over again now that i just did that little rant and you have a little piece of info into my personal life let's get into this week's video i want to talk about behaviors and relationships that are codependent let's start with the basics like i always like to do what is a codependent relationship it is your yearning or excessive need Need. you have an excessive need for love support validation uh, someone to give you a sense of your own identity you depend excessively on someone for or emotionally and for psychological needs the key word with codependency is excessive because look if we're in relationships with anyone we want love we want support of course we want validation here and there um, I don't think we should be getting our sense of identity from anyone or no one should be giving us that, but that's a separate note. But we all need just like the normal things that a relationship should give us. It's the excessive unhealthy need, meaning I need it more from you than I'm actually giving it to my own self. And some people frankly don't even give it to them their own selves because they don't even know how to. If we still can't get those needs met, those just like basic needs met, we are going to go into emotional distress meaning we're going to start suffering from anxiety, depression, panic attacks, not having a strong sense of self, not having a high level of self-esteem and self-worth. You might have some anger. You might start blaming yourself. I mean, you might just honestly withdraw altogether and just completely feel inadequate. This excessive need or this dependency that we have on other people to give us things that they shouldn't fully be giving us is because we were not taught how to actually give it to ourselves. So when you lack the skills to know what to do in relationships, how to be healthy yourself, you're, are, you're already at a disadvantage. Because remember what I said, you will always need, no matter who you are, you need the basic things. You need love, you need support, you need validation, you need encouragement, you need all of those things. And if you don't know how to give them to yourselves, you are going to rely on someone else to give it to you. Now the quality in which that person is even capable of giving it to you is something that we have to look at. Never mind the simple fact that they shouldn't be, whether they're equipped or not, to give it to you majority of the time. Now, where does codependency even start? Obviously, sorry mom and dad, sorry childhood, but we're gonna go back there. We're gonna sit on the therapist's couch and we're gonna go over every single thing that we've ever been through that was abusive, unhealthy, toxic, neglectful, any abandonment that we could have possibly received, no matter how big or small. We sometimes tend to like be able to acknowledge the big stuff. Oh yeah, dad peaced out. Out, and I never saw him again past age seven, but we don't really see the little things and how those things over time equated a lot of the codependency issues that you actually have now as an adult. When a child does not get their needs met in childhood, throughout the course of their childhood, if the if the overall you know consistency in the relationship between mother and or mother and father actually yes child and mother child and father child and whoever was actually raising you if the consistent pattern was that you did not get basic needs met we have a problem okay now we're going to be really playing out that unhealed wound that 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 need that we crave that we never got we're going to be playing that out in relationships this is where we're looking for someone to save us we're looking for someone to tell us that we're enough all of those things that's problem number one problem number two is obviously if you're not getting your needs met you're also not having anyone in your life that's capable of teaching you how to then be able to do this for yourself so i get a lot of people that will say i don't really think my childhood was that bad like mom and dad really loved each other they loved me like you know i'm trying to really figure out where it went wrong where it went wrong a lot of times really has to do with not that you you know experienced severe neglect it was that no one taught you how to do these things as you were becoming an adult Think about just being swaddled, just being held. When you fell, when you scuffed your knee, something like that. Someone picked you up, they held you, they soothed you, you know, they made you feel like everything was gonna be okay. There came a certain point where that just like completely ended altogether. So when it ended, was anyone teaching you how to then do it for yourself because they were no longer doing it for you? 
No. So when those two things happen, I didn't have a great connection or relationship with mom or dad. I went through some abuse, some neglect, no matter how big or small. And so I faced abandonment issues and I was never taught how to have a really strong sense of self. You're wounded. You're wounded. You have codependency written all over you. You will not develop a strong sense of self. You will struggle with your own identity. You will try to copy other people. You will not know what you really think and how you feel. You will want to please others. You will fear confrontation. You will look to someone to save you and love you and give you all the things that you've never received because you're just basically playing out all of those wounds in your relationships. And frankly, you can be playing out those wounds in every aspect of your life, you could be picking jobs based on being wounded. I know for me, coming from a very blue collar background where I was raised by a good portion of my early years, raised by a single mom, you know, that was briefly on welfare and we struggled. We had like no furniture when she left my dad and I saw her go back and get her GED. And then it was, that was it, you know, and then it was just like trying to find jobs to make money there was no going to college there was no making excessive amounts of money to feel secure there was no savings account it was paycheck by paycheck the environments that you're raised in and the things you experience can form some really good things in you it formed a very like hustle mentality in me where i wanted to work really hard where i didn't want to have a, a a negative lack of view of money or success that it was something that was so incredibly hard i realized okay that it's Yes, it's hard work, but it's not hard and, it, and it's doable. And learning how to reprogram yourself. So there's a lot of good that comes out of some of the crappy things that we have to go through in life. And there's also some bad things and things that we take into our lives as a way to kind of like heal that wound. And it's something that we're doing unconsciously. It's not even something that we're consciously aware of. I had no idea graduating from high school, going into college and picking the job that I wanted that my only concern was money. My only concern was how much money could I possibly be making doing this job? There was no question of, would this actually make me happy? Let's first start with what's gonna make me happy and how I'm going to be successful doing that. Instead it was, you don't even think about what you do want to do. You just think about how to make money because that's basically how I was raised. It wasn't about, you know, my mother didn't want to work in a fish house and she didn't want to have to like work in factories or do any of these other jobs that clean houses and, and all these things. She didn't want to do that. It was something that she felt like she had to do because it was her only option. And she was trying to make the most money she possibly could. That was her first concern. Whereas in my generation, that disease kind of like trickled down to me until of course I had a point in my corporate life where I had such burnout and I felt so unfulfilled and I was making great money and I still wasn't happy. So I was like, okay, it's not about the money. It's actually about my mindset around being happy and the fact that I could be happy and make money and feel fulfilled and help people. And, and learning how to reprogram myself was about me healing that wound. When you are raised in environments where learning how to have a strong sense of self is not the priority, learning how to love yourself and not even understanding what that means. I swear we hear that word so much and I would love to know, comment down below, like what do you define self-love? Like what does that mean to you? When I started learning about this, I was like, okay, it's going to be, you know, taking that time to like give yourself that little bubble bath and taking some time to meditate and go to the gym. And while all of those things are very important as I put on some, <laughs> some lip balm, um, it's not everything. A big part of really learning how to love yourself is self parenting. It is about learning how to parent yourself again and learning how to do it in a healthy way, not the way always it, you were parented. It's about learning how to emotionally take care of yourself and what that even means. Like, what does that mean to emotionally take care of yourself? That's where you really, really start healing your codependency. Let's talk about tendencies that we do in relationships that are a little codependent. First off, prioritizing everyone else and neglecting yourself. Now, are you gonna have times where it is about other people and maybe you do take a back seat? Look, I'm a mother, I have, my, I have a son who's 10 years old and I have two stepsons that are nine and 12. And I'm in a relationship and I have a business. Are there times where I neglect myself? Yeah, absolutely. Like I am in the phase of life where that can happen very, very easily because I love everyone. I want to take care of everyone. I want to do the best job. I want to be that mom that I really want to be. And I have to remind myself 
to take care of myself. It's not like when I was in my 20s where I had all the time in the world and every single day, I was just talking about this the other day with a friend of mine, every single day was just dedicated to whatever I wanted to do in order to feel great. So now at this point, you have to make more of an effort into prioritizing yourself. But even in my 20s, I gotta be honest, there were definitely times where I did. I thought about everyone else's needs and I didn't think about my own, regardless of having all the time in the world. Tying into that, it's where you're going like above and beyond to make everyone else happy and you're just completely forgetting about yourself because you don't really have a relationship with yourself. You're not really stopping throughout the day to go, what do I need right now in order to feel good? What's gonna make me happy? What's gonna make me feel fulfilled? Like, what do I want? What do I need? And like really giving yourself that, like feeding into yourself in a really healthy way who's doing that every single day I mean hell even if you were doing it just like a couple days a week can we at least start with that perfect example yesterday I'm sitting on the couch and I was gonna go mini golfing with Ryan and go get ice cream after and by the time I got done cooking dinner and if you guys follow me on Instagram you'll see yesterday I was like grilling everything <laughs> I was grilling steaks I was doing all the work cleaning cooking everything by the time everything was done and cleaned and then put away I was so exhausted but if he really really wanted to go I probably could have like you know rallied and gotten that energy and went but I was like you know what no there are so many times where I do do that and we are gonna do that but today I was like I am going to stay home we're not going mini golfing I don't even have the energy to even do it realized yesterday that I really really need to start making myself a priority now this doesn't necessarily mean that I was being codependent. It could be that I was just being too much of a giver and I wasn't pouring into myself. But if I do enough of that and enough of a bunch of other things that we're going to be talking about, yeah, I'm codependent. A lot of times too, when we're prioritizing someone else, going to like great extremes to like make them happy and all those things, we really just fear abandonment. And a big part of codependency, if not all of it, has to do with your fear of abandonment. It's your fear that you have to be perfect, you have to do this right, you have to give in to this person. And this is something that you're doing you're unaware that you're doing this like I wasn't aware like hmm I'm giving into this person so they'll think I'm amazing so they will never leave me had no idea I thought it was being a good person and now I know exactly what you're gonna say okay Steph well what's the difference between being a good person and then being codependent it's finding the balance between when you should be doing something and when you shouldn't be doing something finding the balance between okay I am gonna put you first nope now today I'm gonna put me first that's really what it was about and that requires you to be aware of yourself and to consciously decide these things so yesterday I became consciously aware that too too often mom puts someone else's needs above her own and so yesterday was an example of okay we're gonna start doing things different then we have those times where we just honestly are suppressing ourselves all together because we just want to meet someone else's expectation of us this was a huge one for me but oh my god you guys saying yes without even thinking about it there was absolutely no thought going on ever on whether or not I actually wanted to do something. Everything that someone asked of me, I just, I, in my mind, it was just like, I had to do it. Like, it, there wasn't a question of like, should I be doing this? Is it good for me to be doing this right now? Like, none of that ever came into play. Talk about, talk about dependency issues. <laughs> like, talk about complete neglect of self that I didn't even have like a two second conversation with myself to go, is this good for me? Like if I do this, what will happen after? Will I be exhausted? Will I be like really tired? And maybe sometimes I still did it because it is, you know, the right thing to do. Maybe a friend really needed me. But then after when I was exhausted or tired or whatever, did I then take care of myself? And honestly, I didn't. That fear of rejection, that fear of letting someone down, that guilt that I had inside for not being the person in that moment that the friend or the partner wanted me to be, that was really leading the show. And that was the wound. 
And I gotta be honest, like for me personally, I know some people really, really will struggle with this, but the minute I kind of stopped and paused and I started saying, all right, let me start doing that quick, like one, two check within myself. Like, should I be doing this? Like, you know, is this good for me to be doing this right now? And sometimes I did it and I made sure to take care of myself after. And sometimes it was, it was a no and learning how to actually say no, learning how to take some pushback, learning how to be okay within my own self for saying no and that it wasn't that I was a bad friend it wasn't that I was a bad daughter or partner it was that I was looking at I was looking out for my own self I was worrying about how this was going to affect me and whether or not it was right for me to be doing it I feel like these are the two biggies in any hardcore codependence life is the ability to say yes with not even thinking about whether or not you want to do something and just this like fixer fixer mentality and now look i'm a coach so clearly i am all about helping and fixing i love it it's what i was meant to do and on some levels being a fixer has nothing to do with like a wound that's inside of me it's just part of my soul part of what i was meant to do here where it became unhealthy was when i was just taking on other people's problems taking something on as if it was my own the unhealthy fixer that's what you do when someone had a problem that was it I was there googling I was making the phone calls I was making the reservation I was doing all the work to ensure that no one else had to be inconvenienced whatsoever that I was going to handle it yeah that's a wound when I did say no at times and I did get pushback having to like work on how in the past I would feel responsible for how someone was feeling, even in an argument or a discussion, how someone was feeling really didn't have anything to do with me because they were, they should be learning just like I'm trying to learn how to handle their own emotions regardless, regardless of what's going on. Meaning if someone does something to me that upsets me or angers me or makes me sad, or they blatantly did something wrong, right? That like her, they lied or they talked about me behind their back or whatever. That doesn't involve how I feel and my ability to like work through that. All of that stuff is mine. So yes, you might hand me over this like I'm angry because of this, but I have to deal with that. It's my feeling, it's my emotion. I can't put it on you. Because if I put it on you, then that means that you need to do something different in order for me to feel better. Yeah, that's insanity <laughs> because not every person is going to see your side, is going to agree with you. Not every person, they make it their life's mission for you to feel okay in every single moment. No, everyone's worrying about their, their own self. But when someone felt uncomfortable, when someone was upset with me, when I got that little bit of backlash, any uncomfortable feeling that they were feeling, it made me uncomfortable. Talk about silent treatment, being passive aggressive, especially silent treatment. I think that's probably one of the biggest triggers with someone who's codependent is the silent treatment will just irk you to pieces because all you want to do is come to a re resolution because you don't want any uncomfortable vibes around and you don't know how, and look no one wants uncomfortable vibes but they're part of life you know not everyone is going to agree with you you're going to have disagreements sometimes you're going to have hurt feelings and you learning how to deal with how that makes you feel is the most important thing that you should be doing let's talk about the best thing in the world let's talk about what do we actually do to heal i'm going to give you three things they're really simple but you got to really break them down because when you try to do all three together it's really hard you got to do one thing at a time and you got to break each thing down in the simplest possible way you can implement it number one you have to know your tendencies you have to know who in your life are you codependent on and in what ways are you codependent on? Do you have a hard time saying no? Are you the people pleaser? Do you just completely forget your hobbies, your interests, and just constantly focus on your partner and what they wanna do, for example, or your best friend? Are you the fixer? Are you uncomfortable when someone is upset with you or they don't get their way? So let's start writing down and really understanding what are the things that I do that are codependent, are dependent in relationships. I really wanted someone to stay 
right? Because abandonment issue right there, which all codependents have. Because I really wanted someone to stay, I wanted to be this picture perfect girlfriend and, and person and, and friend and, and whatever and do everything right and be the best person in the world. And I know that deep down I am thoughtful, I am caring. Those are just my natural tendencies. That's who I am. That has nothing to do with dependency issues or wounds. I just, I know I am a good person. What was missing was the balance between being a good person to everyone else and being a good person to myself. That's what was missing. I didn't know how to be a good person to myself and I didn't understand what that actually meant. So I want you to start with one behavior at a time. So if it's the people pleasing, that's what we're starting with. If it's saying no, that's what we're starting with. If it's, you know, completely neglecting yourself, that's what we're starting with. Or you're also thinking about the specific relationship or person that you tend to do this the most with. So for all you moms out there neglecting yourself and putting your kids first, yes, we're probably going to do it still on some levels, but how can we find a little bit more balance with that? The next thing, you absolutely have to have self-awareness. If you are not aware, then when you're doing these things, you're just gonna go on autopilot because that's just how you're programmed right now. So I know it sounds kind of hard because you're not going to be aware every single time. That's why the way it can help you, the way you can learn how to be more aware and it can actually become a little bit of an easier thing is not to just be like, okay, I'm a people pleaser and that's what I need to work on. No, I want you to work on a specific person in your life that you know you tend to be a people pleaser with. Look, maybe you are a people pleaser with every single person in your life, but I just want you to start with one person because then you'll start to kind of build a muscle where you can sense when you're pleasing because you're only focused on this one relationship. And number three, and this is really where we're gonna like break this down, and I'm not gonna get into like every little aspect of number three, but you absolutely have to learn self-parenting. I will link that course down below, but you have to learn how to be a parent to yourself. Look, the point of mental health is for, as I'm stuck to my seat right now, <laughs> the point of mental health is for you to learn that there's always going to be a wounded little child inside of there that doesn't feel good enough, that wants love, that wants validation. That wound is, is so deep because it happened in childhood that sometimes it's forever with you. Um, or you're just strictly coming from your own ego, which we have both of those things. We have our ego and we have our wounded self. Your job is to learn how to be the parent to those parts of yourself and not let those parts of yourself just constantly run the show and do whatever they want to do and feel however they want to feel. So you learning how to be the adult and the parent to yourself is what you're learning to do as well as learning how to monitor that kind of conversation with that child, with that ego. And you know, if I said to you, hey, look, you're gonna babysit a, a little seven-year-old for the rest of your life, that would probably actually on some levels be easier to do because you're babysitting or parenting something outside of you. But trying to observe self is kind of the first step. And this is where meditation can help you do that. This is where really practicing self-awareness. Like I'm gonna start practicing being super aware of what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling as much as I possibly can because what you're thinking and how you're feeling, how you're feeling 90% of it is not coming from your logical conscious mind, your adult self, your healthy adult self. Majority of it is coming from your wounded self, is coming from your ego. And that's the part that's actually running your life completely. So if you're not monitoring those inner conversations, then that part of you is just running the show. And that's what's allowing the codependency to continue in yourself and in your relationships. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I am going to probably get an iced tea now and I'm gonna go home and start editing this video right away, which I'll probably get interrupted doing that as well. But that's what happens when you're a parent. I hope you guys are well. Please comment down below with any questions, concerns, video topics that you would like me to do in the future. I hope you're having a good summer, fall, winter, wherever you live in the world. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.